Let's take a behind the scenes look at how my LEGO City Rockets intro was made. I use some very simple processes in these tiny productions. I'm pretty sure anyone could use these ideas to improve their videos. Before this rocket takes off, there are two warnings I need to show. Let's kick off by talking about lighting. You need lots of light for a good sharp picture. These tiny sets have two 500 watt work lights and 650 watt down lights lighting them. I added foil barn doors to my 500 watt work lights. How to do this is covered in another video of mine. Controlling the spill of light from these lights is really important because I only want to light specific areas. Apart from controlling the light, you also need to take full control of your camera. Your camera should have full manual control. Nothing is left to automatic settings. To hold my camera I use a Manfrotto arm. Some call these magic arms or friction arms. They are simple clamp anywhere, fully adjustable camera supports. It's a piece of gear I use in nearly every video I make. I brought out my old baby oil smoker for this video. It's just a spray gun spraying baby oil into a plastic drum. When the baby oil is put through the spray gun, it turns into very fine smoke. As it's a pressurized system, the smoke feeds to the set via small garden irrigation hoses. This smoke machine sets up an atmosphere for my rocket environments which can be controlled to deliver tiny amounts of smoke. Possibly the most important item in this video is my $50 Audi smoke machine. It plays such a big part in selling the fact that the rockets have working engines. All the time the smoke was pumped down 12mm irrigation hosing. There was always a cheap box fan motivating the smoke to give it a lively directional look. This was really important to do and it really adds to the effect. I also did spooky smoke using the wet towel method to make low lying ghost smoke. Really simple to do and it's very effective. Let's move on to some simple model making I did for this video. I needed to replicate the two rockets which blow up and I could not be seen to destroy LEGO as the LEGO fans would cite this as a major crime. The small rocket is cardboard tube and cheap Chinese fake LEGO fashioned in the same manner as the real rocket. The trick is to edit this insert explosion quickly and not let the viewer lock their eyes on the fake rocket. The large rocket was really a rough brush painted build. Using everyday items, I crafted a representation of the largest LEGO rocket. I used fake LEGO, parts out of cheap Chinese toys, cardboard tube and pill bottles. In true Mr Maker style, in no time I had a rocket ready for destruction. Let's look at Pyro. First up, I'm a fully licensed special effects and fireworks pyrotechnician with 25 years experience. Before any effect, I always test to see the size of the effect. These fireballs are in fact tiny. The real key to make them look big on screen is to fill the frame of action. I always shoot a variety of angles and need to work to an end result showing a destroyed rocket. Editing between the various angles allows me to achieve this. Slow motion is used to give these brief fireball events a longer screen time. I use glass to protect the test cell engineers from the real fire in these explosions. For me, this is the easiest part of making these videos because I'm just doing my job. Having the fake Lego enabled me to dress in aftermath wreckage, little details like this are so easy to implement. For the engine ignition, I use strobe lights, the kind you'd find on your bike if you're riding at night. In my videos, I often use torches to create really easy lighting effects. The launch of the large rocket took time. I was really keen to make it look very real. The smooth launch was done by mounting the set on its side and using my camera tracking system to move the rocket away from the launch area. All the time the smoke machines there belching smoke, making the LEGO rocket come to life. Certainly shot a lot of rocket footage that never gets seen in the final edit, and before I made this video I had a good look at the rocket launch in the Thunderbirds episode Sun Probe, and also had a look on YouTube at the film Journey to the Far Side of the Sun. Some may know this film title as Doppelganger. The key person behind the visual effects in those titles is a gentleman named Derek Meddings. In my youth I was saturated by his good works via the television I watched as a kid. This really did influence my later path in life. Derek Meddings work can also be seen in the Bond films during the 70s and 80s and the Superman films of that same era. His final work can be seen in Goldeneye 1995. These days sadly all this information and good techniques is becoming a dinosaur art form. I get a few questions from tubers asking what's all that black stuff around the area you shoot, the blacked out area. Well it's pretty simple and all it is is bed sheets that I bought from Tajay. Ah yes, made in China, black bed sheets. I do get some strange looks when I go through the checkouts. I'm going to try and explain the way I hide stuff floating in space. And I've got some piano wire uh, connected to a table there, going up to the LEGO satellite. And I've lit it poorly on this side so you can quite easily see the wire there. Now the trick 
to fooling the audience that it's floating in space is you've got to light it to hide the wire and if I swing around like this you'll start to see that connecting wire disappears because it's not lit on the side it's a matter of controlling the light and making sure that the piano wire isn't lit if you go back to the bad side you'll see it appears again and back again on the non-lit side with lights being controlled and it looks like the satellites floating in space the little Lego touch I did to the minifigure astronaut in the launch sequences, I gave him the head from the gorilla suit guy. So it looks like he's sweating under the stress of launch. Hopefully that was a little comedic moment that some people picked up. And the shaking of the capsule from the rocket vibration was done very simply. You know me, keep it simple stupid. I can't stand complex filmmaking. Well I've spoken at length about controlling the visuals, but that's only part of what makes up a good video. The other most important aspect is sound. I'm going to show you a few clips now of the custom sounds that I generated for the video. And we'll have you going back to look at the original video to hear these sounds. I'm hoping to bring to you soon on YouTube a video how to make a really neat little explosion using a party popper. I get so many tubers asking me, oh Leo, can you talk about explosions? Can you talk about explosives? I can't do that, but I think I can show you this neat little trick as long as I wrap it up in a scientific story. Many of the mega partners bring to YouTube content which is basically dangerous, but wrap it in a scientific story to get round the flagging issue. The TV show Mythbusters also does this same little trick. Anyway, I hope I've showed you some neat tricks in the way I do my intros, and I think it's really important to share the good information on how to make good videos. I'm hoping my video encourages you to make better videos for YouTube. Thanks for watching.